Welcome back, class. We're going to start the third segment. We're going to talk uh, for a few minutes this time about uh, just what defines the uh, monopoly model or, or the model for a monopolist or the model for a monopoly, uh, monopolistic market. So one of the couple of things that uh, we need to remember is the monopoly market, uh, A, it has a downward sloping demand curve. And the monopolist needs to know uh, how much to produce, how much to charge, and they can only sell. If you're a if you're a monopolist, the only seller in the market, you can only sell a greater quantity by cutting price. Um, you don't really have any competition, but if you produce um, a level of output that's uh, greater than um, what you see on that down sloping demand curve, the only way you're going to uh, sell that um, X, I don't, maybe not call it excess, that increase in output is to lower your price. Um, and remember, in, the, in a monopoly, in a monopoly market or a monopolistic market, um, the firm's demand curve is, is the market demand curve. Um, again, downward sloping. But there are no other firms that you're going to be adding demand, individual demand curves across. Uh, you're, you're the only game in town. You're the only producer in the market. And so the demand curve that you're facing um, is going to be the market demand curve. It's going to be downward sloping. And like many markets, you're going to produce at a uh, situation where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Compare that again. We're going back to the competitive market a little. Um, competitive model um, has to, you know, those individuals in a pure, you know, purely competitive, you know, pure comp, you know, competition type market or perfect competition, uh, they are concerned with how much to produce, um, and they set the price to the competitor's price because remember the the market demand in a in a perfectly in a perfect competition or, or perfect competitive model. It's it's horizontal, uh, so that's where we're that's where we're working on is it is a um, it is a horizontal demand curve, and the marginal revenue is equal to the price because of that horizontal demand curve um, equals price. So the price is set makes it a horizontal demand curve, and if you're in a uh, perfect competition type market. You can sell all the output you want at that market price. And the reason you can do that is you're a small fish in a big pond and you're not going to have enough output to really impact uh, the market price. So a lot of small firms set the price equal to your competitor's price, sell all the output you want uh, because you're not going to be able to impact uh, the price of the market. So Again, we keep flip-flopping back. Perfect competition, monopoly. Uh, if we want to talk about from a um, monopolist perspective, total revenue and price elasticity. What combination of price and quantity does the, does the monopolist uh, look for? And how does, uh, how does marginal revenue, marginal cost behave and change uh, as you go out over the, over the time horizon? For a monopolist, demand, remember, it's a downward sloping demand curve and total revenue, elasticity varies along the linear demand curve. And we've talked about this um, in other chapters. It's elastic in the upper half. At the midpoint, it's, it's, you know, it's unit elastic, and it's inelastic at the lower half. And total revenue starts out, if, if, you, if you go back to the text, um, they do a pretty good job on the graph showing you how this works. And total revenue starts out at zero, it peaks, then it declines again, and it ends up at zero um, at the output as output increases. In the elastic region, and remember, we've, we've gone through this in some of the previous chapters, in the elastic region, Total revenue increases as quantity increases and price decreases. In the inelastic region, total revenue increases as quantity decreases and price increases. Remember the example 
Um, and I think the individual was with, she was supposed to be doing something with uh, the price of, um, of public transportation, I think is uh, what the example they used in the text. But again, remember, in the elastic region of the demand curve, and it's a linear demand curve, total revenue is going to increase as quantity increases, but you're decreasing price. In the inelastic region, total revenue is going to increase as quantity decreases because you're increasing price. Total revenue is maximized at the midpoint. Demand is unelastic at that point. So total revenue is maximized at the midpoint of that linear demand curve. Relationship among demand, price elasticity of demand, total revenue, profit maximizing price and output. If you want to find the profit maximizing uh, what, you know, price and output, you don't have to have a lot. You just have to have the demand curve. You have to have the elasticity information and you have to have total revenue information. Profit maximizing, and this, this is the point they make in the text, profit maximizing monopolist will never choose a price and quantity combination in the inelastic range. Profit is always going to be total revenue minus total cost. And then they, they jump into and they, they start trying to tie this together, demand and marginal revenue. Profit maximizing level of output where, again, marginal revenue equals to marginal cost. And where is that? What do we talk about in the elastic region? It's at the midpoint of the downward sloping demand curve. At the midpoint of that downward sloping demand curve, that's where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost and profit is going to be maximized at, at the level of output. Slope of a, and then they, then they walk through um, three or four examples of some, some marginal because they're trying to drive home the marginal decision rule. And remember, uh, they go back and they say, you know, the slope of that, you know, it's rise over run. Um, so the slope of a total benefit curve measures the marginal benefit. Remember, go all the way back to the earlier chapters where we talked about marginal benefit equal marginal cost. They're talking about the marginal benefit curve. Then they say the slope of the total product curve measures, you know, measures the marginal product. Again, makes sense. We've talked about it in earlier chapters. Slope of the total cost curve measures marginal cost. Again, earlier chapters, we, we went through this in detail. The slope of the total revenue curve measures marginal revenue. And revenue changes by increasing the quantity. So that's basically what the marginal revenue they're trying to drive home. It is the... Um, change in revenue by increasing of the quantity by one unit. Remember, change in total revenue divided by change in quantity is the slope and the slope is equal to the marginal revenue. Then they go back again and talk about the elastic, the unit elastic and the inelastic. And remember, midpoint of that downward sloping linear demand curve is the key point because that's where profits are maximized. Marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Marginal revenue for the, mono for the monopolist is zero when total revenue is maximized at the midpoint of the demand curve, of the midpoint of that linear downward sloping demand curve. I'm going to repeat that one more time. Marginal revenue for the monopolist is at zero when the total revenue is maximized at the midpoint of the downward sloping linear demand curve. And again, they go back and they, 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 they keep uh, emphasizing that it's true for any linear demand curve that marginal revenue begins high and positive and declines as output increases. And it's at zero at the midpoint of that linear demand curve. Marginal revenue can be drawn 
according to the marginal revenue curve starts at the same point as the demand curve. Demand curve hitting the y-axis up at the top, marginal revenue starting at the same point. The marginal revenue is twice as steep as the demand curve. So if you go back to the text and you look at, um, at the curves that they have on their examples, they both start at the same point up here on the y-axis, on your vertical axis. And if you look at it, the, the slope of the marginal revenue curve is twice as steep as the demand curve. The marginal revenue curve cuts the horizontal axis halfway between the origin and the demand curve cutting the horizontal axis. So if it's twice as steep, it just mathematically makes sense. It's going to, to cut that horizontal axis at the midpoint between the origin where the y-axis and the x-axis come together, We're going to cut that x-axis, the horizontal axis, at the midpoint between the origin and where the downward sloping demand curve cuts it. Uh, they talk about competition. Um, it, you know, and, they, and again, they, they keep going back. They keep waffling back and forth, trying to compare perfect competition and, and a monopolistic market and they talk about perfect competition, the firm demand curve is horizontal and the marginal revenue is always equal to the price, right? Go back to, to the discussion we had, uh, that would have been in chapter nine where we're talking about perfect competition. So that firm demand curve is horizontal, marginal revenue is always set to the market price. Monopoly, the firm downward sloping demand curve Marginal revenue is going to be less than price. With the downward sloping demand curve, you have to cut your price to sell an additional unit. Remember, marginal revenue, change over total revenue, change of total revenue divided by change in quantity. So the marginal revenue is always less than the price simply because to sell additional units, you have to cut that price. Um, cutting your price to sell an additional quantity. And it, you know, always the marginal revenue is going to be less than the price. And they, they go through an example and, you know, in, in, in the text and uh, they're selling, uh, you know, a quantity of three units at $7 and they decide they're going to sell an additional quantity and you know, they're going to sell to $6. That additional unit of quantity from a total revenue perspective, they get an additional, um, they get an additional six bucks for it, um, for that particular unit, but only three dollars in total revenue because seven times three is twenty-one, six times four is twenty-four. Twenty-four minus twenty-one is three. Divided by, you're going from four units to three units, so four minus three is one. Three divided by one is three. So there is your, uh, that is your marginal revenue. Even though the additional unit gets you $6, your marginal revenue is only going to be $3. Make sense? Monopoly equilibrium. Uh, and when you try to drive the equilibrium price and quantity for a monopoly, you're applying the marginal decision rate. That's why they spend so much time in this chapter, as they did in nine, talking about uh, marginal revenue. Similar to a competitive market, the monopolist drives uh, price and quantity to marginal revenue equal marginal cost, and they try to produce at that point if they want to maximize profits. And then if you go to page, and I think it was on page, I've, I've written down here page 381. So um, there is a, there's a graph on page 381 that you probably want to take a look at because it is invoking the marginal decision rule um, and you're only producing in the market. You're the only producer in the market. So you are being driven by the marginal decision rule. So how much to produce? To figure out how much to produce, you only need a marginal revenue curve, a marginal cost curve. Remember, marginal revenue equal marginal cost and a demand curve. You find the quantity the quantity for that monopolistic market, you find the quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost because you're going to maximize profits at that point. Um, and then you set aside, so you've got quantity, 
and you look at, so you, you've got your quantity down here on the horizontal axis, you draw that, you know, that perfectly vertical line up to the demand curve, and that's going to get your price. And so you go over to the, to the uh, vertical curve or your y-axis, and there's going to drive your price. And how much should I charge? And that's how the monopolist determines how much to charge. Once they find out the, uh, the equilibrium quantity by setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, they just go to the demand curve, find the highest possible price for that, um, for that particular quantity and the highest possible price to sell all that you can produce. Demand, marginal revenue, and marginal cost all that one needs to determine the price and quantity to maximize profits in a monopolistic market. And again, if, if it's a little, if, if I'm not being exactly clear enough, they do a pretty good job on page 381. Again, remember, again, you're looking at marginal revenue, marginal cost, set those to equal, that gets your quantity. You use that quantity to go up to the demand curve and that's going to get your price. So there's your equilibrium quantity, quantity and price. And again, monopolistic market, all you need, marginal revenue curve, marginal cost curve, demand curve. And then we then they ask the question, okay, so we know what the equilibrium price and quantity is, but how big is the profit? All you need to know is the average total cost Remember, you set the marginal cost equal to marginal revenue, sets the price and the quantity for the monopolist. And the, the profit at that point, the per unit profit, it's the price of, of a unit minus the average total cost. Remember, total cost divided by quantity gets your average total cost. That's the price that the monopolist can sell their goods or service for minus the average total cost gets you the per unit profit per unit profit you multiply that by the quantity uh, and that ends up getting your 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 total your total profit so fairly straightforward just a little um, mathematical gyrations um, and again they go through that on page 382 so 381 and page 382 pretty does a pretty good job tying everything together we're going to stop at this point, and when we come back, we're going to do the last segment. Talk to you in a few minutes.